obviously uh, one of the other famous names that uh, you were involved with early on was was Mario Lemieux. Uh, and and I wanna I wanna ask your opinion on on something that happened very early in Mario Lemieux's career. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, Wayne Gretzky, and when he was drafted, he didn't necessarily want to go play in the Sioux. He was never, oh, drafted. In, in, in the junior. Sioux. Uh, um, but the idea of a draft and your responsibility to a team when you're drafted, famously, Mario Lemieux, when he was drafted by the Penguins, didn't go up for the ceremonial handshake. And I've I've heard rumors that you had a lot to do with that piece of advice. Do you want to, are you able to tell some of that story? I definitely had, it was my advice. <laughs> was it really? Not not an easy advice to sleep on. Sure. Oh yeah. Why don't you can you can you give some some context of of maybe what was going on pre-draft? Uh, Mario was just even though he didn't have a good Mer- uh, Memorial Cup in Kitchener. Right. He was the number 1 player. He was yeah. just phenomenal. Nobody questioned player. that. Yep. Well, this day and age, I mean, it was a no-brainer. You get 3 million bucks and you get all these bonuses. Sure. In those days you got nothing. Yeah. I'm negotiating with here again, I started something. I talked to Eddie Johnson mm-hmm. prior to the a week before the draft. And I'm in Montreal, and I said, Eddie, are you going to pick Mario number one? Oh, good. What do you say? Let's have a coup here. Let's uh, let's do the contract now. Yeah. And then you announce he's number one, and he's signed. Yeah, okay. No. No. We started negotiating. Pittsburgh has no money. Okay, yeah. The owners are... Football people, 49ers. Right. So it got nasty during negotiations. I'm asking this much money. The kid is that dominant. He's the number one. They're offering lower. Eddie, this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. He's number one. Sure. I'm not asking the world here. But at that time, they thought it was the world. Anyways, it got real nasty. They weren't They weren't coming up. But I had told Mario, they're, they're wanting to underpay you. Like, yeah. It's not, it's not right what they're offering, and we have no place to go. Right. I'm going to recommend, you know what? Don't go, I, I'm going to tell them, don't go to the table. Huh. I, I'm going to tell them, they can tell them, you're not coming to the table. Let some other team take them. And, and there was no animosity that I wanted them to go to Montreal. I just was so upset. With the way the negotiations with, were happening. Like and- I would say, if it was a Swedish guy, they can say, well, I'm going back to Sweden. He didn't have that option. I, yeah, you can go back to Lavelle. Right. No leverage. No leverage. And that was just totally unfair. So my my last kick at the cat was for Eddie. And I told him, he's not going to come to the table. I said to Mario, his, his parents only spoke French. I really never spoke to the parents that much. So he said, guess I'm going to do what you say. And uh, well, my last kick of the cat for Eddie was, look, Eddie, Pittsburgh's putting 7,000 fans in in this ring. Now, I'll go down to what his figure was. was like At that time, it was 300 and a quarter. Mm-hmm. And 500,000 was high. Yeah. That's what I think right. uh, uh, Brian Trotche was making and those guys were making. Sure. And they were at three and a quarter. I said, they're getting 7,000 fans. I'll go to three and a quarter, but I want $1 a seat for every fan over 7,000. Oh, Wow. Wow. That's brilliant. That's so, that's fantastic. And he lost it. Whoa. I said, Eddie, if he puts more f- bums in the seat, then you got the money to pay him. Exactly. If he doesn't, then, then you you've don't. got to figure you were asking for. Yeah, yeah. I just want him to be paid. What he brings the, to the organization. Those asses are put in the seat. Wow. That's, that's I didn't realize that was the, uh, the he, tipping point there. That's, and he went. He went nuts on that. He went nuts on that. Did he ever agree to it? No. Well, three days after the draft was over, because then I advised, advised Wayne not to go to the table. Or Mario. They, they, yeah. had this, uh, they had this part-time scout for Montreal. He comes up in the morning of the draft. He leans over me to talk to Mario. And he says, Mario, you have no choice. When Eddie mentions your name, you got to get up. and go. I want to punch him right now. <laughs> <laughs> They announce his name. I'm sitting beside Mario. It seemed longer, but it was probably 30 seconds. Probably felt like 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it didn't seem long enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to me. Yeah. And he got up and I'm saying to myself, hey, you know, that's his opinion. That's his, he's entitled to make that decision. Sure. 
So he walks down. He doesn't walk to the table. He just walks right to the the reporters are. Oh, uh, he didn't go to the table. So he just he just he he doesn't do the ceremonial right. handshake. Yeah. He just walks yeah. straight past to the he reporters. Does. And then three days later, I got a call and met Eddie Johnson at a motel outside in Queen Elizabeth, the yep. Queen Elizabeth Lake, and I got like five hundred thousand. Okay, so he bumped it, but he, he bumped. you know it's an interesting thing because full circle. When I when Sidney Crosby got drafted, now Mario's an owner in Pittsburgh, yeah. right? And um, I remember going down there for one of the first games, and, and and if you recall, they were trying to sell the team at the time, yeah. And they were getting you know, the offers weren't anything exceptional, so they're waiting for a good offer. Um, this is the way I understand the story, but I know I went down to Pittsburgh to see Sydney play, and you could grab a seat anywhere in the building. Right. You know, there, the cab mm-hmm. driver didn't know who he was. And yeah, he yeah. Said, You're about to have a really good hockey team. And they go, yeah, well, you got this kid coming in and he's going to be great. Yeah. And But Mario's part of the team. Now, now Mario's still an owner. Right. Yeah. He never sold the team. But if he, if Sidney had that kind of deal, he would, I mean, what he's made that team worth. Yeah. on his shoulders, yeah. which is what Wayne did, which is yeah. what Mario did. And so to, it's almost like profit share. That's, that's fantastic. It, it is. Well, it really is, yeah. But was, but that was brilliant because was, that brought him to back to the table with yeah. the right amount. Yeah, he says, if you think I'm going to start a trend like that. <laughs> well, he was probably very smart not to do that because that... Well, that could have been more fair. It would, it would, it's, that is very fair, but... That is not well. What, I mean, at what least a, what a uh, a conservative kind of ownership is going to want to do. It's right? it, he's probably thinking, give an inch, and then what are they? Gonna, and then it's an element of concessions. It's a percentage of the jersey. You know what I mean? So that would have so set a huge bad press. I get where he's coming NHL from, but it's a great thing. idea to basically say, okay, if you don't have money, then and and you're worried about money, here's your solution. Now put up or shut up. Thank you so much for watching this clip of the Sign Off of Frameworth Podcast. Just a reminder that we have full episodes of the Sign Off available wherever you get your podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. Make sure to like and subscribe on whichever platform you use. You can find us on Twitter at Frameworth Sport or on Instagram at Frameworth Sports. And hey, if you're not sick of me yet, you can find me on Twitter at Retrograde Mikey. Finally, feel free to send us emails with your questions you want us to answer on the show, and we may feature you live. You can do that by sending your email emails to sign off pod at frameworth.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you with a new episode every single Thursday.